Americans like it better when they clap first. You can run like hell when it's all over. It didn't go well. <laughs> Thank you very much. What, this is, actually, this is a treat for me because uh, I am a professional historian, and your, your life circulates around it. I loved history from grade one on and uh, sort of thing. But um, you don't often get a chance to explain to somebody what you were doing and why. And this book um, has a very interesting history uh, that uh, death of a child, which uh, it, you should never suffer, but we suffered, caught us right in the middle of it. Uh, our youngest son, James, had got interested in uh, self-publishing, was fascinated by the, he was a tech, tech guy, liked computers, all of this was done on a computer, so we know. And um, he wanted to find something to do, and he came to the conclusion that he thought he'd try self-publishing. And the first book he tried was a handbook for children by his oldest daughter of how to raise, breed, and show dachshunds. And it was very well received and a, and a, a great job. And that got him interested again, so he came to me and uh, asked if, Dad, do you have anything that we could historically um, deal with? And um, he knew that I was working on a history of the Hodgson Company in Dover, if some of you know, was a great builder of, of, uh, of uh, portable prefabs. And so we, he thought around that. Instead, he discovered, we discovered, that the catalogs, catalogs for that company were, not, were hard to find. So we put together a reprint. And that was well received by professional art, architects and so on. And then in, uh, in 06, he decided we would take a trip. He grabbed his youngest daughter, Olivia, and I, and we headed off for uh, Orange County, Virginia, which is Jefferson's home county and so forth. And this is not unusual because I used to do the same thing with him. I'd take him out of school and we'd go off and had a, we'd have great, great times. But it gave us a chance to talk about what, what we should do. And I said to him, you know that the postcard I believe is the largest collected artifact in American historical structures in society today. And he went, mm-mm. And this was in June. And so when we got back, I took him to the Eastern Massachusetts Postcard Convention in Waltham, Massachusetts, which, is now, which I now call the, the Marathon Bombers site. That's where they were running around shooting at each other in that very, very lovely school there. And we went in in this big room and so forth, and um, he didn't believe it. All these guys sitting, flipping cards, crates of them, Massachusetts, so on. We walked by, and I, in effect, uh, picked, stepped over this person collecting Massachusetts and picked one out. I didn't realize it until it, on Stoughton, Massachusetts. So. Mm -hmm. It's not this Norfolk. This is the first. Sorry, it's not Norfolk. This is the first oh. one. Okay. The inspiration. This is, well, it, it's an inspiration to get him to do it. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You take the back, you know. Okay. Uh, I hope you can see it. And so I said, whoops. You may have to share, but that's, that's okay. Americans always share. Okay. Do you have enough there, or? Paul? Something Society, eight, something about the Society. Now, if somebody, somebody would share would be nice. I'm sorry, I thought I had enough. I figured on. Pardon? Speak loud. Okay. And the funny thing, just last week, I got through the mail. We're a fan of Smithsonian Magazine. Are any of you historically inclined? That's one of the best going. And they put out a magazine, Smithsonian's 101 Objects That Made America. Okay, this comes in a book too. Now it's just about objects. In effect, what that postcard is an object. Now if you can, can you read it? Or I'll read it for you. So he's, he's getting
with you. Can you pass it? So I said, I, I, and what, this caught my eye. So I, was, I, had, I had looked down, and it says, it says, be sure to come to the Ladies' Aid Society barn dance. November, uh, that's, I don't know what day in November. The young lady you had the last dance with in Northeastern, Kay Porter. Now I asked Jim, is that what you call hitting on somebody? Yeah. Yes, yes. And in effect, this just made me feel much better about my feeling about postcards. I'm not a collector of anything. I've tried collecting all my life and I can't do it. But she does, collects everything. It's very, and, but it's, you know, it's a good trade-off in that sense. So he finally got convinced that the, the postcard had value. So then what we, what we decided, had to do, we sat down, or when we were driving around, to organize how we would do it. And I said I wanted to do it for Norfolk County. And there were some personal reasons for that, because I was strolling, or rather rolling around in this county in 1937, 38, 39 with my father, who was a shoe manufacturer. He would take me on his trips to, uh, to, uh, to meet friends or to uh, sell something and so on. So I saw places like Holbrook and others before I ever thought of it again 40 years later. So it was, to me, that was me. But the other thing was that counties, at least in New England, are not really dealt with valuably, that is, presented in, 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 in a way where you can begin to see if there was one thing that was important about this county in the middle of 1870, what was it? Come on. What, in terms of what? Town of Norfolk. No, 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 no. 1870? Shoes and boots. This was a shoe town. Avon was a shoe town. Holbrook was a shoe town. Uh, what's Brockton was men's shoes. My father's factory was in Haverhill, women's shoes. But that's what one of the most important things here that had grown up before the Civil War and so forth. So I began saying to myself, how would it happen if you collected these in such a way that they begin to tell you about the history? So we organized a, I don't know what, what I, I call it a matrix. I have one here. I, I, I happened to bring Wellesley. That was no affront to you at all. It just happened it was on top of the box. And we put together um, the book in this following way. You all, you've all seen this sign. You see it probably every day, time you go in and out of the town. Each town has one. In fact, the, the state is putting on a uh, a uh, advertising campaign for towns to become more, do this and keep them up because they also are doing them differently. And it's great because it's not a patented or anything, anybody can use them. Do it that. Then the biggest thing from an educational point of view was this, the town seal. I guarantee you I can walk through this town and the first 10 people I pick up don't know what the town seal means. It's just something that passes in front of you. I think I've done. And then, then comes a little history. And we have, we have the first time a, a map um, citing the, the, where the town is. The, the maps for that were done by my eldest son, who's a, he's a geologist, scientist, and, and oil man. And so he did this for us. Because everybody in the family was involved in this. And so you put together, they were asked to put together a, a historical piece which gave you the things that appear to be most important and how they, hopefully, they were hooked together, their relationships and so on. Uh, and then came a section on postcards. So when we sent a letter out on this, we, we sent a, I sent a letter, we sent a letter to every one of the towns, to either the commission or the society or both. If you, if you deal with a place like uh, Avon, they're both. Henry Cook IV 
is both the president of the society, the president of the commission, and he is one of the most marvelous tailors of regimental uniforms from the Civil War on. Self-made. And he's a neat guy. But he, like, like the others we identified, they were asked to choose 10 to 14 postcards which they thought showed the town. We didn't pick them. We might have asked them to make a chain, or, or if we discovered, uh, that, that looking through it, that this one might be better. But that became the, the centerpiece. Let me get this. We're going to look at some of these in a minute. And then when you get through that, we then have people who lived in the town. Did you know? Did you know that the Secretary of State of the United States currently grew up in Millis? Did you? Well, you will after you read this book. Then they left. His father was a, was a, a, a diplomat. And then the did you knows of uh, people that were prominent or other things. And then a listing of how to find more about the town. The people who did it. We didn't do all these. We asked people to do it. The editor is over there. She went through this thing over time six times to check everything. She's got an eye like an eagle. So. And then books that we found relevant to, your com to the community. And then you move on to the next. They were organized by date of incorporation to save uh, people saying, I should be here and I should be there. We did it that way rather than alphabetically and so on. So Norfolk is still on the bottom side, despite you know, all of that sort of thing. And let me try to do this. So when you, when you open the book, uh, Robin, you said, I just did it. There it is, OK. Hey, um, let me have that screen. What did I do? Uh, get those guys off the side oh. of the screen. Oh, great, OK. Oh, no. Am I going to? No, that's right. No, that's right. You're just, okay. just OK. No. Where are you? How many of you have been there with a the babe? Da, 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 da. <laughs> right, Mosley's on the Charles. And what other town could we go in the county for uh, another big dance hall? Still there. Lake, Lake Pearl. Right. Now, I grew up in West Newton, and I would go to Normbega Park to the, yeah. to the totem pole, similar to the, what's that really? Is not, it's not, what is it called? I forget. Oh. But that was, again, part of the environment then. Ballroom dancing. It's still here with us, by the way. They're still going strong. Moses is still going strong. It's very interesting in that sense. Uh, there was evidence could be given by the person that I came with that I'm not a very good dancer or dancer at all. But I'm fascinated by it in the sense of what does it tell us about ourselves? timing and so on. I wanted to go back. Oops. What's that? It's Stetson Shoes. Is it still there? Stetson Shoe is now a conglomerate of medical offices which service the, over the side South Shore Hospital. But when I saw that in 1938, my, my was father were going in there to see from Sam's to see if he make a sale in tough times. So, whoop! I'm, I've, I'll get this yet. So we deal with that one. Now this one's fascinating. What's so important about Thayer Academy? Who's it named after? General Sylvanus Thayer, who was the superintendent at West Point. He is called the father of West Point. He left all of his money to establish that academy and the library. 
suggests something also about us. Education, school, they're still there. School is tremendous. They're just doing some more rebuilding and so on. Ah, now a lot of us, including, Med you're not, but Medfield and Dover, where I live, uh, front this river, the Charles, and this is the Narrows, where you, the people in Millis uh, took on the idea that the, uh, that, uh, the Indians had, that they hear, kept hearing a bell ringing in the middle of the night. It's called the Dingle Hole and, it's, and so on. But it was something fascinating to couples. It's a great canoeing area. And it's, it's fascinating even more that down on the further end, Medfield struggled for years of what to do with the hospital, the uh, state hospital. Who is it? Where is it? Rentham. Attaway, Rentham. Now, I can't remember all of them. The, the thing I think is fascinating about this is that uh, maybe somewhat, except the back of your town's part, I, I, don't, I can't recall anything of historical importance on the other side of the town hall, but um, this has got schools and meeting places. Was a, it was a uh, militia ground. And it really was a center over time. And the same thing happened in Dover, where we live. The militia ground is still there. It doesn't have the militia on it and so on. But it's the sort of thing that, that uh, another thing we would like to happen with this book is it's got educational value to it. Now, I, I won't kid you. It, you know, we've been out smelling this, selling this thing. Oh, sorry. Selling this thing uh, as academics un, unaware of lots of other things. And I haven't heard a bad word about us yet. I call this thing the wow book because when you start thinking about it, I had a whole crew of Rentham people because there's a, there's a picture in here, another picture of uh, Rentham, uh, of a motel out, out on old route one, 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 now 1A. And I've been looking at that, that postcard for a couple of years trying to figure out if, if what I thought it was, was. And I've come to the conclusion that it was. was. And it was a motel that was made of Hodgson prefabricated buildings. And it was a motel and a gas station and so on. Typical of, of the 1930s in terms of as the automobile became same. Ah, uh, there it is. King Philip Lake. You're right. I forgot to put King Philip in there. I didn't tell you on the way over, Eleanor, on the way over, we went by King Philip's trees. Oh, somebody know else with it? Know that? It's on the road connector between um, Millis and Medfield and Dover. I come that back road. But there, there's a, that's, a, that's a 1940s scene. But they didn't have what we had at the totem pole. We had sofas, deep sofas, and dark light. Add away, right? OK. Oh, sorry. Oop. Gorgeous. If you didn't know better, or I didn't know better, we'd, we'd think we were in the south of France. This is a huge French chateau, which is now one of the finest um, auto museums in the United States. In fact, if you've got time to take your kids and others, take them. Grandchildren, it's a great place. Lars Anderson. Ah, anyone know where this one is? Bridge. Oh, yeah. Ah, right on, right? I used to cycle to, to, um, to uh, Echo Bridge all the way from Newton Corner some days. Now, that was a fair stretch on my bike, but uh, yes, it's very interesting. It's, bet it's, it's uh, between Needham and Newton. It's uh, Lower Falls. Is it Lower Falls or Upper Falls? And, and Needham's on the other side. What's even more interesting in, it's probably the only span of this size left in the world. It's 150 feet wide, 30 feet high, or whatever. No, maybe I got it reversed, or something like that. And again, the canoeing aspect. This one you might, you not, might not get. Because I, I, I always am bothered when people come, become so sure of history that something that happened only happened there, not here. And this is true of the Underground Railroad and abolitionism. 
This is the home of the Reverend Jacob Hyde, uh, who was a major uh, abolitionist. His house is uh, it's not in the card, but um, uh, well, there the was, way. pardon? It says Midway. Okay. I'm sorry, yes, it is Midway, yeah. But that, I, the, the card didn't have that, and so that's one of those things we sort of picked up on the way. Ah, oh, this is the, my favorite. Yeah. Now we don't we don't do this any longer. I, <clears throat> in passing, I lived in a, a section of Warrendale in Waltham by the Gore Estate. Does anybody know that area? And that used to be way in back where the Ringling Brothers came in to park. It was an outdoor job, not in the garden those days. So to fill that, and I remember, I put the two together because they didn't have horses at that time. But there was a, a, a doctor and his family. This thing roved around. There was a king and queen in the book. It's king and queen. And it's just a spectacular entertainment structure. It went along with um, the um, trolley uh, parks. You know, understand trolley park? Uh, Brockton had one on the edge with was destroyed. They would, where people could get out and up in the trolley and they would go. It was part of the, just the natural days of life at that time. My mother was always fascinated telling me, well, yes, Paul, I, we could, I could walk down to West Newton Square and hop on the electrics and end up in Worcester quite nicely to, to meet a member of the family and so on. The same way that she used postcards, plain or otherwise, to send a letter all over around her at the last mail at three would be there on the morning side. You know, phone, yes, they had phones, but they, they were writers in that sense. Ah. Oh, boy, you're so lame. Yeah, fascinating. It's had a great history when it first, <coughs> excuse me, used to be a movie theater on the, on the third floor, ballroom. Now it's what? It's just... No, it's, it's, it's the police station. The police control it. Town Hall is on the backside on School Street down in that. Used to be the town hall. Used to be, yes. And it's in marvelous condition. It's an 1870s building. Here again. What does this emphasize? You know, right, which one? Do you know which one this is? Stoughton. Stoughton, actually. Well, I, sometimes people don't read. OK. 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 They're having problems with it, evidently. It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's a historic piece. It's, it's controlled. Uh, but it's still, a, it's still a train station. Motor, the trains come in. People go to work that way. But there's something happening about um, wanting to do something. And it's got historical status, which means it can't be moved without full legalization of whatever it is and so on. But I've always liked it. In fact, uh, Wellesley, off the, off the square, used to have a gorgeous one. And they just destroyed it one year and put a parking lot into it. I think it's parking that's on the other side of this is a place where, no, excuse me, it's on this side, where every trooper in the United States Army would know it if I said the Cork and Grumpity. What did they make? Jump boots, the greatest jump boots made. And uh, that was West Stoughton, which was a <coughs> shoe town. We have another one. I think I put, there it is. That's, that's uh, George Belcher. Now, he was the largest producers, uh, producer of lass in the world, L-A-S-T. What's a last? Yeah, go ahead. It's, the, it's part of the shoe. It's the... No, it's not a part of the shoe. It's the insert that you build a shoe around. A last. And then it, then it can, helps contain that when you take it off the last. It's, it's a sort of curing thing. So it's a moat. That's right, like a moat, yeah. Is it made of wood? Yes, wood and metal. I have some You probably, a lot of people, may, you can always find some guy. I had a class give me a pair of uh, bookends made out of last one year. That's the sand. What is it? Sanitarium. Pardon? It's the sanatorium. Right. Fondly known as the sand. No longer. But what did it create for, what town is it? Sharon. Sharon. What did it create for Sharon? 
what, what did the purpose of the sand? It's coming back again, if you don't you know. This is a tuberculosis sanatorium. Tuberculosis is rising again in some other parts of the world. Really? Yes. Is it still yes. Staying? Is Pardon? It still, is it still staying? No, that, that's, no, it do, isn't doing that. But that's, Sharon became the center of health areas for people to come out and spend months to recover from tuberculosis. And that's the nickname. Most every kid in that town would have a summer job or a job after school doing, you know, taking care of the lawns and so forth. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know how I would respond to this today, but I remember during World War II, I got a job at the Newton Wellesley Hospital in the in, in, incurable disease ward. My mother found out she almost had a conniption fit. And some, another one, this is a polite sort of thing about growing up on the coast. How many of you sail? Barely waved. <laughs> In Cohasset, that's where they all got the first start. If you go to Marblehead, you'd find a card for that. I'll tell you, it's, it's, it wasn't any fun to be out in the March wind on, on Marblehead Harbor in an old 110. And uh, my roommate at Harvard took me that, and I regretted it to the day I got out of school to get away from him. Horace Mann Building. Yeah. Now, they went through a school process. Look at the architecture, though. I keep looking at all of these new views around the world. I keep finding this in the Middle East, for instance. And, uh, but it's now, it was then turned into the town hall. Then Franklin um, put their town hall, I forget what the street is. It's a huge thing uh, instead of this. And now it's back to offices again. Know what this one is? I'm, I'm counting on the fuzziness. You can't read it properly. <laughs> Foxborough. Well, that used to be. Now what is it? Housing. It's gorgeous, by the way. In fact, uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, he was the famous editor of the Franklin paper. Uh, took me by there one day, and, and we went in. There are houses, condos, all variables of housing structures. And it's, it's the whole, and it's been done very tastefully. Uh, but some, some places have let them you know, deteriorate when they could make some money out of it and so on. But this is for nipsomaniacs and some other f name that we, oh, I, I, I put this, I allow this to stay because I thought it was the most atrocious card in the whole book. Really. This is, the, uh, this is Peaceland. This is, this is Adam's home, uh, and, and where he and Mrs. Adams brought up the family and so on. It's still there. There's a library over here, which is a much better building. And if you're a good uh, historian, you might want to get in there sometime and find lots of things. But ah, uh, I couldn't find one. It's one of those things that happens in the county all over the years in the summertime. Uh, in fact, um, I did a monograph on Canton, and uh, I think I noted that um, Babe Ruth was playing on a team running through there in the summers. This is Randolph on the ball field. Uh, that's actually the ball field there. The crowd just stood around on the edges of it and watched how they were going. And uh, now this is, fa I'm fascinated by this because we lived in Canton. And this is the, the homestead of one of the more famous members of the community, a man by the name of Morse, who, uh, who created the Rising Sun Stove Polish Company. What did that do? I really can tell you, the kids love this stuff. I mean, what were they, what were they putting stove polish on? On metal stoves. Have any of you had to tr polish a stove? Yes. Good. OK. OK. What killed this company, though? Electricity, oil, oil heat. <laughs> no. Oh, enamel coated stuff. The porcelain, right. Came in. But he decided to stay in the town and do good for the town itself. And so he stayed and spent a lot of money on public buildings and all sorts of things. In fact, 
if I remember correctly, even the back side of his house is a member of the trustees of the reservation. You know, family left that. Now this is the one I, that I used for this for Dover. I, I liked it really because the eagle commemorates two things, two, two groups of people. What might they be? The soldiers themselves and the Indians. Then the, and on the row, there's a, the, you can't see it, but this is the, the oops, the, right there is the front uh, wall of Highland Cemetery. In that rank, they're from French and Indian, Revolution, Prince Philip, uh, King Philip. And that's sort of it. Around the top, every, uh, there are numerals in, in Latin for all of the 11 or 12 wars that we have been involved in. And it's just a very nice column, but it's on the militia ground. So that's it all involved, because Dover doesn't really have any town center, business-wise, a couple of odd stores and so on. And there, there we are. There we are. Right over there. <laughs> I know it's right over there. When Jim and I would come up here, and for Vince, he would never remember him, he'd get excited about this and stuff and so on. He was just overwhelmed with what was going on. Just had a great time. We had a terrible time. I was on that committee, and they didn't, the older people did not want us to remove that thing. They had a fit. They yeah. chased me out of town. <laughs> Yeah, well, but actually, it, I'm sorry. It's before 1964 because the church steeple isn't complete. Yeah. Now, see, there, there's another one. I don't have it up here, but if you get, have this book and, uh, and you read it, you'll find that in um, Bellingham, uh, there's always been a, a, a discussion over the town seal originally and maybe something else appeared with a tower, a top to the tower, and it was never made. It's never been there. It's still flat. <laughs> so they, they couldn't figure out how they would have to spend all that. Didn't want to spend all that money, I guess, so just let it alone. Now this, I love. This is, I think I'm right. And Eleanor, I asked her the other if she had seen it. But I thought there originally had been the title, The Vision. Vision. Does you know where it comes from? There it comes from. Norwood. Oh, yeah. Now, this is 1910. Because all of these cards are in the 1870s on to about 1910. Only a couple of them are, are uh, even in close to us. I made a, a couple of years ago, I put together a new set of cards for Dover. And one of them include one that I really wanted was the Dover Demon. Have you ever heard of the Dover Demon? Sometimes get the book called the Weird New England. Anybody read Weird New England? There's a book out of it's, uh, Massachusetts of the uh, unusual things. Like right. Well, those are not just out there. Old out just again, Rob. But it's it. The demon is there. It's, it's a great. It's a great uh, f folklore structure and so on. But th look at what they've got: dirigibles, cars, overhead transportation, the trolley car on the wall, bicycles. The lady with the parasol. I don't know. How many of you have been watching Downton Abbey? No. Haven't you enjoyed the ladies' clothes and the hats? I'm married to a hat wearer. She's probably the only person in church every day with a hat on. Yeah. Keeps her head warm. Ah! Now, this was absolutely important for the whole county. Because I didn't. I should have, but I didn't put a trolley map of the county, and you would see how it was connected together. But this one's even more fascinating. This is, yeah, where is it? No, I'm sorry. This is not the right one. This is Holbrook. But this was their first uh, electric, which went straight down, and in effect, connected them both way to Brockton and to Braintree made a whole difference in their life structure. Mr. Honeywell was really the sugar daddy for Wellesley. And these are his gardens. 
uh, his house is up on this side. This is a pavilion. Uh, all the topiary, this is very fascinating. Uh, you can't get to it very easily. You can canoe out and look at it. And you can also come up on the back side if you get through the, the uh, college uh, structure itself. Is that the Charles River? Uh, no, that's um, a yes, a pond right in front. It's it's a man-made uh, lake, yeah. Right. This is this is a sort of thing that that I had n never realized that, that a certain area. I, I realize this, and some of you know that many of the Bostonians came out here to the to the county for the summer. I mean, Dover's all Farm Street houses were summer summer houses, but. The Jewish people came out here, as did um, later uh, Sikhs and um, other Indian structures, and s set up these large hotels like this one where they could serve 257 people at a time. Now, the reason for why they come out, like to come out here was that they didn't have to do the cooking. It was a nice restaurant, uh, because as you know, some of you might know, Jewish cooking is very elaborate at times, etc. There we go. This, now this one was, this is initially, initially, it's not in Brockton, it's in Holbrook. And it was, it was torn down and some of it was rescued and used in timbers in neighboring houses. But that was a great uh, entertainment factor of, the, of this, of communities. And I, I, I really did this, the usual military, civil war, or all these things with the guy standing up there with his rifle seemed to be a variable. It contrasted with, with Dover, which uh, was, was memorializing the soldiers as well as the enemy of them at times. Ah, here's the other one. This is Westwood. And every summer for about six years, then when they shifted over in the, in the summertime, got, had new conductors, one of them was a, a young fellow out of Fordham, whose name was Spellman who later became a cardinal of the Catholic Church. But he came up here to do some work to pay for the next year at, at, at Fordham in, at Westwood. And initially, even better, right up in this section, there was a small Howard Johnson's orange roofed structure. In fact, uh, one of our other writers who did Milton has got a book out on him just now that's been sailing like you can't stop it. But that, the orange roof was a great part of some of our lives in certain age groups. And now I'm ending in the one that I always thought there was something that was unreal about this. Bellingham. Yeah. What town? Was Bellingham. Well, uh, not. No, 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 no. Not, um, yeah, well. No, 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 no. It's like New Hill. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know the, do you know the vicar of Dilby? Huh? Do you know yes. the, the comedy Vicar of Dilby? Any of you? Yes. Yeah. What's his name? Goes no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plainville. Yeah. Okay. And after doing this, I got involved in some way because yeah. they're now involved in this cab, whatever, the gambling structure. Yeah. Then the guy ran off with sent, or sent all the money to some other place. Uh, they're they're. But, it, but again, this is the 50s, 1950s. And this little town, Plainville, which you've tucked away, you probably never, how many of you ever been through Plainville? OK. Okay. Are you, OK. Yeah, I know we are. But, but in the sense of, it's, again, the, the issue of cowboy. In fact, back to Downton, every now and then, and something said about, the, about Americans, they're always related to being, you know, fellows heading west to, to shoot the Indians or something or other. Yeah, I don't know whether we had a good learning exercise, but I hope so. Mm -hmm.